What's up, y'all? This is Henny. Listen, today we're deep diving in LumaFusion 3.0. I've had a tremendous time being one of the beta testers for months using this. As you know, I've been using LumaFusion my entire YouTube career. So 3.0 is definitely the update that I'm glad to see. And there's some really, really welcome uh, new features as well as just improvements all around. So let's get straight to it right now. Let's go. <laughs> So first off, I gotta say I love the new resizable UI interface. As you can tell right here, right, there's this little piece right here where you can just touch and drag depending on what device you're on. You can definitely arrange all the windows exactly how you like it. And if you've messed up, you just double tap and you're right back. So having a resizable UI, depending on what device you're using, can really add a lot of value. I know I've used this when I'm using it on my phone and uh, you can see it, it makes a big difference whether you're in vertical or you're in landscape. It just really helps out to be able to, you know, get the right type of layout that you need for a specific type of editing session that you're having. So the resizable UI, I'm really, really digging that. Another new huge feature for LumaFusion 3.0 is the new graphic equalizer for audio. And so if you double tap on any video file or any audio file in your timeline, you know, it'll bring up to your edit window. And now you can see here, you have a graphic equalizer when you hit the down button on the graphic equalizer on the side. And so now you can see that you have all these different ways that you can adjust your audio depending on what you need, right? And uh, it's amazing to be able to, uh, you know, really adjust your audio and be able to set up presets. I say all that to say, let me roll the sponsor for today's video, my new audio EQ presets for LumaFusion. Roll that clip. Listen, today's video is sponsored by my new preset pack for LumaFusion. You know, LumaFusion has a new graphic equalizer, and I know it can be very daunting for a lot of people to try to get their audio sounding crispy. So I've developed a nice little pack for female voices and male voices, as well as a couple high-pass mid-boost presets where you can definitely dial in the perfect sound for your voice to get your EQ in a better space to be able to put your videos out there with great audio quality. This whole segment is recorded with a dry vocal, meaning there's no EQ, compression, gate, or anything like that recording on this vocal right now. So as you're hearing me speak, you'll hear the difference in the way some of these EQs can process your vocal, whether it's taking out some of the lower frequencies, whether it's boosting some of the mids or raising some of the high frequencies, making sure you're choosing the right preset for your type of voice. Whether you have a lower type of voice like myself and you need to take some of the lower frequencies out, maybe you have a high frequency voice like a female and uh, you need to just boost the mids or the highs. I have a few presets for both to be able to dial it in. That's why I had to bring it to you, the new Henny's LumaFusion audio presets for the new 3.0 uh, update. So they're available in my store on my website, hennythebusiness.com, and hopefully you'll check it out and it can help you out just as much as it's helping me out. All right. So now that we have a graphic equalizer, you can really dial in exactly what you need for your audio. The only problem that I have with the equalizer so far is that there isn't any Q function. Usually when you have a equalizer, uh, specifically with you know audio plugins and things of that nature, you'll be able to adjust the frequencies, but you'll also be able to adjust the Q. So for those of you who do not understand what a Q function does on an equalizer, let me take this description from sweetwater.com. On many equalizers, changing the gain of a frequency band also changes the Q, which affects the slope of the EQ curve or how many adjacent frequencies are affected to which degree. This is also the normal way for a simple filter designed to work. So you can see with every frequency, there's a bar that goes up and down, right? Up and down on the equalizer, right? With the Q function, instead of having just one line, you have a two lines so you can spread out how much of that frequency gain you want right the more spread out of the q the more it's going to affect different frequencies the more narrow the more it's only going to affect that frequency that you're trying to eq 
So usually you can take a cue and just spread it out if you wanted to affect a little bit more frequencies from the left and the right of it. And that is not necessarily available right now on the graphic equalizer inside LumaFusion 3.0, but it still is a welcome addition. And I'm so glad that they uh, have added it to this new update. Adding to the graphic equalizer, another amazing addition to LumaFusion 3.0 is the ability to use AUV3 plugins inside of any audio track. So if you look at what we just showed you right here with the graphic equalizer, right, you can use this or you could use what is an audio unit plugin. That's basically any of the plugins that you can buy, third party plugins that you can buy from the app store that most people use for audio, audio production, audio editing, things of that nature. So for years, I've had numerous types of audio unit plugins. I have a few that I've loaded in and tried and played with as far as audio unit plugins for LumaFusion 3.0. And all you have to do is right, right over here, you can see that there's this little plug button. And if I hit that, it shows me all of my, you know, audio unit AUV3 plugins that I can bring over to LumaFusion to use. Maybe I wanted to add something like a chorus, right? Like Blam Soft Zero Chorus. You literally just drag that into the in use side of the organized third party plugins and then you're done. And then it should show up here, right there um, as a chorus, right? So now this is that what the uh, Blam Soft Chorus you know, you can mix and play with it, right? You can add feedback or whatever, or you can, you know, get out of that, delete that, and you can use something like Channel Strip. Now, Channel Strip is a plugin that I definitely would recommend. It's $4.99 on the App Store, and it has um, three different ways that you can uh, really compress, gate, and equalize your vocals all in one strip. So if you can turn on, you know, each of these functions, you have a gate, which basically closes up the audio. Then you have your equalizer, like we talked about before, right? You have an equalizer where you can adjust your lows, your mids, your highs, however you would like. And then the last one is compression. And which compression is gonna do is going to take those high parts where you're talking loud and it's gonna compress them down. And all those that where you're talking soft, it's gonna bring them up and try to keep everything normal. It's gonna compress all your audio to make sure that it kind of has, it stays in the same kind of waveform. You can take all of that and then you can save it as your own preset right here. And then you can also save that as a preset inside of LumaFusion. So whenever you've dialed in directly what you want from you know a specific plugin, AUV3 or what's built into LumaFusion, you're able to just go ahead, save it as a preset. And next time you do a video, one of the first things you wanna do is just drop this preset, if it's like a talking headshot where you're just talking directly to the camera like this, just drop in that preset that has, you know, either your equalizer or something like this channel strip to be able to go ahead, have your audio already dialed in, and then you can chop up the rest of your video as you normally would. What I can say about these plugins is sometimes you'll get um, some funny things happening where, you know, some of these plugins are maybe just a little bit too, um, Maybe they have too much graphics to them and other little things, and they can kind of uh, allow LumaFusion to kind of act a little funny. Sometimes some of these third-party plugins don't work exactly how they need to work, and I'm not sure if it's an update on LumaFusion side or if it's an update that needs to happen on the AUV3 plugin side, but some, not all of the plugins that I've used have worked 100% as I tried to bring them in, and so that's something that you need to know about. That's what I have for the AUV3 plugin, but I really, really enjoy the fact that I can take some of the plugins that I've used for years and bring them in to LumaFusion 3.0. So the next thing that's is really a welcome addition to the edit side of LumaFusion is the new numeric input. Once you're on the edit window, with anything that you're trying to adjust, you can hit the little window over here and it kind of gives you kind of a calculator look right here on the screen. And so let's say that I wanted to gain up the audio of this file just by two. I can hit two and hit enter and then it's going up. Maybe I want to do 2.0 instead of two. Let me go back 2.0 and boom, there it's two. Regardless of where you're at in the edit window, you can definitely dial things in um, depending on what parameter you want. So all of these fine tuning things that's happening in LumaFusion 
3.0 is only making it even more professional for people like us to be able to really get what you need to get dialed in. And I love that about what LumaTouch is doing with this update. One of the biggest updates to LumaFusion is the ability to use external drives. Things like this. This is a Samsung T5 one terabyte drive connected directly into my iPad Pro. Being able to use this and read and write files directly to this while still editing your footage, editing your files is a game changer. LumaFusion 3.0 just did that. Let me show you how I use it. So I have a new session loaded up. If I come down here and I go to files, right? I'm gonna add a link to folder. I'm just gonna link my entire ENS T5 one terabyte drive, right? Boom. So now my files are already here, right? You can see I have my Luma Fusion 3.0 video here and I have some files and I'll be able to show you the next thing that's really dope about Luma Fusion 3.0. Let me take this file from uh, my Fuji X100V. So one of the other dope features, pardon the, the... And as you can see, I now have everything reading and writing directly from the hard drive. So I can edit, right? I can clip files, do everything that I need to do to be able to take this to another level and have more space on my iPad and not just use it all for video files. So regardless if you're editing files from this, backing up files, dropping files from cameras to cameras to phones or whatever directly on a hard drive like this. Now you can just put it all on a hard drive and edit directly from LumaFusion. And it's amazing and it works seamlessly. I would recommend these T5 drives. They're a little cheaper than the T7 drives. They work just as good on an iPad. It's flawless. I haven't had many errors or many glitches or many crashes. So it's just been working great. And so for anybody looking to find the right hard drive to edit from your iPad Pro, I would recommend the Samsung T5 drives. So one of the other dope features, pardon the, the lawn people out here, I had to get it done, but the next feature is the ability to do stabilization built into LumaFusion 3.0, right? It's a crazy great way to get unstabilized footage like what you see right here on my X100V from Fuji. I'm walking and talking, I got it on a boom pole, and we're just gonna see what this looks like as I start to add uh, the stabilization to this footage, so. So now I'm back here in the house, right? You just saw that file. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is double tap on that file, and then I'm gonna come down here to this button that says stabilize. So now I've hit the stabilize button inside the edit window. I'm gonna go over here and hit lock and load stabilization by core melt. It's going to track the dominant motion and then it's gonna to try to stabilize. Sometimes it works better than others. Let's see how it worked on this video. So one of the other dope features, pardon the, the lawn people out here, I had to get it done, but. So you can see that it's stabilizing a lot better if I turn it off. So one of the other dope features, pardon the, the lawn people out here, I had to get it done, but. And back on, you can see it punches in a little bit, but as long as you have a wide enough lens, you're gonna have enough room to punch into your face and it's gonna find that motion and it's gonna give you way more stable footage than you had before. So one of the other dope features, pardon the, the lawn people out here, I had to get it done, but. Overall, as long as you focus on the way you shoot your video and not make it too overly shaky, the lock and load stabilization by Cormel is gonna do a great job at smoothing out a lot of those jitters. Now, it might seem a little wobbly on the sides, but to be able to have this inside LumaFusion for those pieces of footage that you really need to kind of stabilize a little bit, it's really gonna help out quite a bit. So overall, I'm telling you, LumaFusion 3.0 is a great, great update. And I'm super, super grateful for developers like LumaTouch who consistently add value to the products that they are offering. And this is a free update. Now there will be some in-app purchases coming soon. There'll be things like multi-cam, video scopes, other things. It'll be, I believe, in the director's pack and that'll be an in-app purchase, as well as subtitle integration, proxy editing, things of that nature. So definitely, definitely, if you're on an iPad, if you're on an iPhone, if you're on any iOS device and you're trying to edit video, you can definitely trust that LumaFusion is the only way to go for making your most professional looking quality video edited on your iOS devices. So that's pretty much it with LumaFusion 3.0. 
I mean, I've dealt with the whole LumaTouch team for years and they, you know, they're just good folks doing, you know, good work for our community, our iOS, iPad OS community. And I'm super thankful for them. Just like I'm super thankful for all of you who continue support and watch what I have going on. The biggest thing that I can tell you right now is to just use what you have. Given, you know, this LumaFusion 3.0 update is a free update. You might have a phone, you might have an iPad, uh, you're trying to get your channel started, you're trying to get your branding started, whatever it is. Um, use what you have don't focus so much on the things that you don't have yet because you know when you deal with companies who are constantly giving you you know great updates and you have the devices that you have to create that's the biggest thing it's just to create and get it out there and not focus and be hung up on what's the latest what's the greatest of course it's coming from somebody who's always trying to update to be able to show you what's next what's new what's coming in the future but don't get so caught up in that because it really doesn't matter in 2021. I don't care if you're using a $3,000 camera or a $300 uh, iPhone or iPad, you can still get great content out there, use great software and do what you need to do to level up your career, to level up your skills and your branding. The biggest thing is for you not to stop, for you to keep going. And like I've told many times before, give yourself enough grace. Give yourself enough time to be able to let God work in the middle of all the things that you're doing. Because, man, I'm telling you, these are the times right now to just keep pushing forward, keep going. There's so much confusion. There's so much frustration in the world right now. Do your best to give the world the passions and the creativity that's inside of you. That's all I got for today, man. Hopefully you got something out of this LumaFusion 3.0 update and a little bit of my tutorial of it. That's about it. I'll catch y'all in the next one. And I'm out.